Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. Today's stage 15 of the Tour de France brought to you by Ketone A. KE4 is what the pros like to chug down after a hard stage like today. So if you need to save 15% off of your next box of Ketone A, make sure you use the code BUTTERFLY in your next order. Save you 15%. Now let's get into today's stage 15 of the Tour de France. Five categorized climbs and it's going to sum it with the last category climb being an HC at about 8% average. So you know it's a monster. But what you may not know is that it starts from kilometer zero straight up a category one climb. Four category one climbs today, followed by the HC. You know it's a monster stage. So what will Viz Melisa bike do with Jonas Finigo after he dropped 40 seconds to Tade Pogacar here at the Tour de France in yesterday's mountainous stage? Well, it's a back-to-back -back mountain stage. Like I said, with five climbs, Jonas Finigo and Viz Melisa bike, they might be interested. When the riders hit the kilometer zero, we start seeing attacks all over the place. It's Arnold DeMar going out the back for our KS Samsic. Cavendish is going to be coming out the back. We'll see a large group of sprinters getting dropped early in the first few kilometers here of stage 15. Up front, when they go over the first KOM, the Peloton's being led by UAE team members chasing three riders at 15 seconds. As we see, Godu get brought back with his breakaway companions. We reach into the valley and we got about 25 riders going up the road. Multiple riders from Movistar, multiple riders from Bora Hansgro, You know X got some numbers in there, and Intermarche has Benjamin Germay with some teammates. Now they're coming up to the sprint line competition. Benjamin Germay has got his teammate in front, leading him out through a left bend, followed by a right. Once they've come off the left, though, Benjamin Germay throws in acceleration with Michael Matthews on his wheel. As they reach the right bend, though, Michael Matthews already throwing up the arms left and right, trying to get Benjamin Germay rele relegated at this moment. Benjamin Grimaia goes across the line first, but the officials, they're going to move him to third here at the finish of this crossing the line sprint line competition because they believe Benjamin Grimaia hooked Michael Matthews back there. Up here on the butterfly effect, I don't see it that way. When you look at the road, the shortest line is coming from the left to the right. If the officials don't want the sprinters to hook a rider into the curb when the road's bending to the right, don't put a bend right before the finish line. Either way, Benny and Germay, I think you won the sprint, but the officials are going to relegate you to the third. You still get more points over Jasper Philipson. Now this group of 25 is hitting the second climb here on stage 15, and it's blowing up all over the place. We look at the Peloton. DSM were told to ride the front from their director Sportif and keep the gap at a minute. That's what they did, so DSM's throwing in attacks with Bardet and Oscar only. With Oscar only trying to go across the gap, Carapaz is throwing in attack from EF Education going solo up to the group up there as it's blowing up all over the place. Once we get to the top of this climb, we got about 16 riders at the front with about a one minute, one minute 10 gap on the Peloton behind because Laporte from Bismillisi bike started driving it up the climb and blew about four or five kilometers into the climb. After that, we'll see that it was Bart from Bismillisi bike getting on the front. So they're holding this group of 16 over the second climb here on stage 15 to about a minute, 10 minute, 20 second gap. Now we go up into the third climb, everything's steady and smooth. Bora Hans grow with multiple numbers. They're riding with Bob Youngles on the front, Sobrero's on the front because they got Jai Henley trying to win the stage. Movistar's got the same MO. Alex Aaron Burrow's on the front, and he's got some company with Romo, his teammate riding the front, because they got Enric Moss in this group. Now, when, the, when those guys roll in full gas over this third climb, everything stays smooth. They start gaining a little bit of time on the peloton behind, but we see Wild Van Aert's going to start riding on the back of the peloton, on the front of the peloton back there. As Wild Van Aert's riding, he's got some company. Bart's still at the front riding with him too, holding the group. We're coming in about 75 kilometers to go, and the front brake all of a sudden starts playing some games before we get into the fourth climb here on stage 15. With the games being played, if I show you, Simon Yates was dropping back from the front of the group in about fourth position, and then the group split. We got about six riders going up the road, and we see the hesitation back there. Ben Healy from EF Education, a jump across, but he'll leave Carapaz behind until we get into this fourth climb. Then Carapaz is jumping across solo. As Carapaz is trying to go across solo, the front group's blowing up as Bob Youngles and Sobrero started to drop off the front. That left three riders up front. We'll see, of course, Movistar's Moss made it. Jai Henley's up there. And Lawrence DePluce is up there to make three riders with Richard Carapaz, who had some help from his teammate Ben Healy for a little bit, but Ben Healy can't bring the time down, so Carapaz is going across solo. We look back at the Peloton as they hit this fourth climb here on stage 15. Also, well, they were going full gas. 
Then all of a sudden, Wout Van Aert blew. We see Bart blew with Wout Van Aert. Tis Benut still left, and Jan Tratnik are left, but Jan Tratnik's starting to blow, but the Peloton's getting reduced massively here from Bisma Lisa Bike's pace. As we look up front, Tis Benut's going 100%. Benut will blow. Now it's time for Wilco Kelderman to go to work. As Wilco Kelderman's going to work, as we're nearing the top of this fourth climb here on stage 15, up front, Carapaz is bridging the gap up to the three riders. He'll go across the KOM with four riders there and one Tobias Johannesson, 30 seconds back. That's going to bridge across over the top to make five riders in the front group with about 50 kilometers to go. The peloton behind, Wilco Kelderman going up this fourth climb here on stage 15. Well, he's drilling it there. He's got it down to less than 20 riders as they're going full gas right now, trying to make every climb difficult with Wilco Kelderman driving it on the front. They got Mateo Jorgensen and Jonas Vinigo, of course, in the KOM jersey, holding it for Todd. Bogacha. Behind those guys, Tade Bogacar's in there. Rimko Zevnapol's in there. He's got some teammates. And Tade Bogacar's got two and sometimes three teammates as Solero make it back on after the descent. Now we go up front. They got about a three minute and 15 second gap when they went over the top of the KOM. But as they're dropping down the descent, they lost time to Wilco Kelderman. Five against one pull in and they're dropping the gap down to about two and a half minutes. Wilco Kelderman's going full gas, but now it's time for a nature break back there as Jonas Vinigo's got his teammate Jorgensen looking after him. Wilco Kelderman opens up a gap because UAE team members back off the throttle. Wilco Kelderman realizes the mistake, backs off the throttle. Jorgensen closes the gap after the nature break. Now they're going full gas again. Like I said, about 20 riders. And some of these 20, well, they came from the break up there. So there's really only about 15 of GC riders up here that have some climbing legs left. Now we're coming into the last and final climb, five climbs on today's stage 15, 16 kilometers to go. We see the five riders reach the climb. Now we start seeing the first attacks from Jai Henley. Shortly after that, Carapaz is gonna throw an attack. The next rider is gonna be Enric Moss throwing an attack, but everything's getting brought back. We look at the peloton as Wilco Kelderman comes flying in with just under 16 kilometers to go to start the last and final climb here on stage 15. Wilco Kelderman blows right away. Jorgensen has to go to work. Right away at the back of the peloton from the pace for the American rider riding for Visma Lisa bike. It's blowing up back there as we see the original breakaway riders start dropping fast with Ben Healy coming out the back. Fogel Sings coming out the back from Israel Premier Tech. Then we start seeing some of the GC guys as Derek G, Israel Premier Tech's getting dropped. Jorgensen's throwing down on the front of the group. Then we start seeing Almeida open up the gap as Enos Carlos Rodriguez has to close the gap and Landis closing the gap with Carlos Rodriguez. Up front, Jorgensen still throwing in some effort there as Almeida starting to go out the back and the group up front. Now they got three. It's Richard Carapaz, Enric Moss, and Tobias Johannesson who bridged on coming over that last climb and got back on with 50 kilometers to go. He's still one of the three riders left up front. We look back. Jorgensen's going full gas at the moment. He's dropping Santiago Butrago out the back. And if I back the film up just a little bit, we'll see it was Ciccone coming out the back early too. Now with Santiago Butrago, we got six riders left. Two from Bisma Lisa Bike, Mateo Jorgensen, Jonas Finigo, two from UAE Team Emirates, Tade Pagachar, Adam Yates, and two, two from Sudho Quick Step. That's Remco Evnapol and Mikhail Landa, the Spaniard, holding on, the teammate for Remco Evnapol. As these six riders are bringing the gap down to the three riders up front, we're coming in to just under 11 kilometers to go for the GC favorites back there. We get into about 10 and a half. Jorgensen does his last big acceleration to bring Jonas Vinigo into 10 and a half. And then Jonas Vinigo throws in a huge acceleration with Tade Pagacha, the Slovenian from UAE Team Emirates in the splendid yellow jersey locked on his wheel. Remco Evnapol can't hold the pace. He's backing off the throttle and the gap's getting bigger. We see Carlos Rodriguez. He's backed off the pace too and he's losing time. Once we go back up front to Jonas Finigo, he's catching the original rem remnants of the breakaway. The five riders that were left as he's flying up to Jai Henley. He's passing Jai Henley. Now he's coming up to the back wheel there of Tobias Johansson. He slots in front of Tobias Johansson with, with Tade Pagacha are locked on his wheel, and they're coming up to the last two original breakaway riders as we see Carapaz up there and Moss. Now we're going to see Jonas. He's still flying on the pedals. Carapaz will slot behind Tade Pagacha and try to hold on for dear life, but he's going to take the time to spray a fan that's running, running along the right side of the road. Once he does that, he gets popped as Jonas is doing everything he can to drop Tade Pagacha going 100%. Has blown up the GC favorites here on stage 15 of the Tour de France. Now he's trying to get rid of Tade Pagacha 
spots are looking back over his shoulder once they get into about seven kilometers ago. Now you can start seeing some of the fatigue levels looking like it's starting to show up on Jonas Vinigo front, but Tadej Pogacar still looking fine. They get into five point. 5, 5.7 kilometers to go. Jonas Vinigo looks over his shoulder. Now Tadej Pogacar can see the signs there that Jonas Vinigo is getting tired, throws in his attack at five and a half kilometers to go. Gaps Jonas Vinigo right away. Tadej Pogacar is going full gas. Remco Evnepoel still losing time back there to Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo. As we get into three kilometers ago, Tadej Pogacar has got 30 seconds on the Visma Lisa bike rider behind. Get into two kilometers ago, it's stretched out to 40 seconds. Jonas Vinigo is in trouble. If he's going to try to win the Tour de France, he's got to do damage control right now up to Tadej Pogacar. Come into one kilometer to go, the gap's up to 50 seconds. As we get into 500 meters, Tadej Pogacar still flying on the pedals. He comes around the right and the left bend at 75 meters to go, powers all the way to the line, then sits up, celebrates, arms open as he knows he's won a third stage here at the Tour de France and cushioned his race lead of the general classification over Jonas Vinigo who will cross the line one minute and eight seconds behind Tadej Pogacar. Remco Evnepoel will lose massive time, just just under three minutes from Tadej Pogacar's time to round out the podium here on stage 15. Now, when I dissect the tactics, why did Visma Lisa bike go all in? I was texting my home skillets left and right this morning, and I said, Visma Lisa bike want to make this stage hard because it's 200 kilometers and five big climbs, at most of them being at around 8%. So you know it's difficult. Visma Lisa bike had this stage always marked on their calendar because it's 200 kilometers long, five climbs, all steep. The only benefit that Jonas Finigo has over Tadej Pogacar, he weighs less. So just like in the 2013 Vuelta España when I won against Vincenzo Nibali, because I was lighter, I noticed as we had longer stages with more climbs, my power on the final climb was more impressive than Vincenzo Nibali was during the 2013 Vuelta España. But same here for Jonas Finigo. They're doing the same MO. It's a longest stage. It's five mountain passes. So if you can go up over every climb hard, it gives the benefit to Jonas Vinigo if their form is really even. The problem is they don't have Sepp Kuss. They don't have Steven Kreisway. They don't have Dylan Van Barley. While Van Aert's only half the rider that he has been in the past, so they're underpowered. If you'd went into this stage and you have Matteo Jorgensen, who did a spectacular ride. Matteo Jorgensen, you were money. Tip of the hat. Jonas Vinigo, you were money too. But if you come into this last climb with Matteo Jorgensen doing full gas, then you have Sepp Kuss doing full gas. Well, Sepp Kuss can take Jonas up to about three kilometers ago. And maybe then if Jonas attacks, I don't think he drops Tadej Pogacar because Tadej Pogacar looked magical. But maybe then if Jonas drops Tadej Pogacar, he only has three kilometers to go. If he doesn't drop Tadej Pogacar though, he doesn't have that same kind of distance to lose so much time like that minute and eight seconds we saw on today's stage. So Jonas Vigo, I like the plan. I thought it would have come in the last week of the Tour de France, but when you look at the profiles of the last two mountain stages, when we're talking about 19 and 20, they're shorter stages than today's stage 15, so it doesn't benefit Jonas Vinigo as much as it does Tadej Pogacar. And remember, anytime you bring the mountains down, the level becomes more even. Anytime you extend the mountains up higher, the lighter weight rider, normally, if they're on the same level of fitness, the lighter weight rider will perform better. Here on today's stage 15 of the Tour de France, we know Tadej Pogacar was just too good. Visma Lisa Bike did a great job of trying to win the Tour de France today, but because they don't have Sepp Kuss to take Jonas Vinigo deeper into the final climb, it means Jonas Vinigo had to drop Tadej Pogacar immediately, otherwise he has to back off the throttle and say, hey, I just don't have it, I can't get rid of him, let me get on his wheel, save the Tour de France, and see if we can fix it on stages 19 and 20 of the Tour de France. Instead, Jonas Vinigo and Visma Lisa Bike went all in 100% with Jonas Vinigo trying to drop Tadej Pogacar and pull it on the front for five kilometers while Tadej Pogacar gets a draft. And no matter what any commentator tells you, there's always a draft going up a climb when you're going as fast as Jonas Vinigo and Tadej Pogacar were. And if you don't believe me, well, go out on the road and ride on the flats. Tell me if you get a draft. Those are the same speeds that Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vinigo are doing coming uphill even when it's 8%. The Visma Lisa bike rider and Tadej Pogacar, they're flying, so there's always a draft. Once Tadej Pogacar held on for that first K, if you're sitting on the Chesterfield, you know once he gets past the first K, the draft is going to start getting, giving him some recovery. He's going to rest for the next four. Then he lights up Jonas Vinigo, solos in the stage. 
puts one minute and eight seconds to hold the race leader's jersey here at the Tour de France and add more time over Jonas Vinigo. So much more time that it's hard to see that the Slovenian Tadej Pogacar will lose this year's Tour de France unless he bonks badly, COVID hits, or some kind of accident hits in this last week of the Tour de France. Fantastic racing here on stage 15. Jonas Vinigo and all the Visma Lisa bike rider, tip of the hat going in 100%. I would have been a little more careful, though, if I'm Jonas Finigo, if you can't drop him in the first 1K, you got to hope to change plans and go into the last stages, 19 and 20, to try to beat Tadej Pogacar there, even though they're not ideal stages. I get why you did it, but if it was me, I tell Jonas Finigo, if you can't get rid of him in the first kilometer, you got to back off and switch under the wheel of Tadej Pogacar and start playing a tactical game here on stage 15. They didn't, and now it looks like the Tour de France is going to be won by the Slovenian Tadej Pogacar. Barring some kind of accident or some kind of huge bonking, Tadej Pogacar will win his third Tour de France here after stage 15 of the Tour de France. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon.